Welcome to the Fear Fiction Podcast. Fear Fic means we do nothing but read AI-generated stories. What a weird world we're living in, where AI is rapidly taking over creative duties for artists. Many maintain artists will always exist, and that AI generation of content is just another tool in the tool belt of creators. Others feel art is and has been dead. But one thing is for certain, art and writing isn't complete until it's consumed and interpreted by humans, which is what we do. Or maybe not. Maybe we'll all die in a mass extinction event that turns all humans into zombie-like creatures hungry for gold. And we'll all die when there isn't enough gold to sustain our zombie bodies, so we die a second death. But our highly advanced AI continues to pump out art for us to consume, despite the fact that we've been dead for millions of years. Anyway, Slime Beast and DP, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you about monster trucks. Let me tell you about monster trucks. Oh, let me tell you about monster truck. Um, so w- why? Let me so, tell you so about mo- monster trucks and those three tooth monster fucks. <laughs> w- w- our opinion on trucks is very negative, and by that I mean I have a very negative opinion on trucks. Mm-hmm. And Abysme has been hit by trucks, so you, as a good friend, are also anti truck, right? I mean, I'm not pro truck. Okay, kind of a, you know, the- I'm kind of like I'm I'm neutral. When I'm in a truck, essentially. But, but, but leaning towards. <laughs> it's very towards, dangerous. Yeah. Moderate, but leaning towards anti truck. Yeah, I mean, I don't see the point of trucks beyond commercial commerce. Like, you know, yeah. why would you, why do you need a truck? Seriously, Karen. Get it? Haha. <laughs> hey. Hey, but Karen. You, what's when, up with your big SUV, Karen? Oh, hey. hey. <laughs> but, but, but when you, like, size up. Of course, up you're complaining trucks. about Biden's gas prices when you're driving that monster. <laughs> oh, it, politics. Good. It, it really is insane that, that they just build these cars that, like, don't even fit into garages. It's it's bonkers. Like, if you can't fit your car and do a normal size parking spot, mm-hmm. then your car is wrong. Right. And should be made illegal. Exactly. I, anything, anything that is larger. Then what I have is pointless and stupid, and if you like that, you're a fucking slut. <laughs> if you, <laughs> <laughs> if there was a monster truck, I would want to know how to kill it and what kind of gas it takes. Hmm. But so here's my issue: monster trucks aren't aren't trucks. They're basically big coops, right? Like they're a coop. A coop. A coop. Yeah. Like a chicken coop. No, like they saying like those a, things are full of chickens. That's inhumane when they're doing that. That shit. It, <laughs> they're probably freaking you, the fuck out in there. Could you imagine that? <laughs> could you imagine? Hey, everybody! It did, could you imagine? Hey, hey big, double, draw a monster truck full of chickens. Yeah, do <laughs> <laughs> tweet it to monster trucks and say chickens. <laughs> could you just imagine a monster truck coop truck that just like flips upside down? It's like see through. It's like a giant coop cage. Yeah, it flips upside down and like falls on it, crushing the the driver and all of the chickens, God just damn it. splattering them. Boy, uh, I tell you, when that when that was done rolling, we couldn't tell chicken from man. <laughs> God damn. But we yeah, what is your confused. actual point about monster trucks? Sorry, again. We, we we tried to give the 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 chickens a blood infusion of humans. The chickens got <laughs> the the man got chicken blood infusions. It was a whole mess. God damn it. There really shouldn't have been any any reason for confusion, but you know, here we are. There's no, no. reason for confusion when it comes to a transfusion. Yeah, so they're they're more car shaped than truck shaped. I, why don't we call them monster cars then? Uh, because truck sounds like fuck, and That's it makes true. everybody horny in the audience. <laughs> Everybody's just watching, watching the monster trucks go off, just be- oh. beating off furiously. Oh. Oh. <laughs> stupid. Oh, he can oh. dig my grave any day. Oh, grave digger. Oh. <laughs> Could you imagine just like the the willful the willful monster truck cuck? God damn it! What? <laughs> okay, so they're just like having the autograph session after the monster truck rally. And it's just like, boy, howdy! I'd really appreciate it if you uh if you took my wife and bedded her. I, I'd really appreciate it if you took my car out into the parking lot and ran it over while I watched. I'd really appreciate it if you ran over my wife. <laughs> God damn it! Can somebody kill my wife here? Does anybody? <laughs> 
What? Anybody. I don't want to watch. She want, She's consensual. It's consensual. <laughs> Damn it. Murder cucks? Murder. Monster truck murder cucks? Monster truck murder cucks. Tonight on AMC. God. Oh, my lord. Monster no, wait, truck. TLC probably would be the better channel for that. TLC, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Man, that's T- TLC is a fucking train wreck, and uh, that's because it's basically drama YouTubers, but a channel. It's more like a truck wreck, let's be honest. Let's be honest. All right, so Monster Truck Murder Cuck, we've already got our title for the episode. Do we even want we to do. continue? Yeah, well, we need to fill out the time for Monster Truck Murder Cuck, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we could just make it silent. By the way, everybody go back and listen to all our episodes again at 0.5 speed. I think I already said that, but do it, seriously. We got to do it. We're not not asking at this point. (laughs) So this is... This is an AI generated story. We're going back to those because we're fucking addicted. Mm-hmm. We love these things so much. And this is from the superior novel AI. We're like Skyler from Breaking Bad because we're fucking addicted. <laughs> People know if they saw Breaking Bad. People know. Look at them. Look at them all. I, they know. They know the Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. All I know is the pizza thing, and then that show was honestly kind of boring to me. Well, that's because you're. St- smart it's yeah. true mm-hmm. that's why i like things like ai generated stories we're doing magnet head mm-hmm. and so the first paragraph of this was written by you yep and nothing else i and didn't nothing... this time it ended on its own i uh, in thick mm-hmm. this is the story of magnet head the tall humanoid creature with a magnet for a head he was created by trevor henderson <laughs> And now stalks the abandoned warehouse and factories. He likes I made, to wander around. I make around. myself laugh. He was created by Trevor Henderson, but he actually stalks things. It's so stupid. What a fucking idiot. Okay, again. Okay, so uh, I, I do like that because of Infer Kit, where we have to like talk to it in baby terms. Do, do you think you need to talk to novel AI in baby terms to get it to understand? No, I think it... Uh, I don't know if it picked up on anything with Trevor Henderson, but... I feel like I can talk to it like an adult. I feel like it's a peer, a fellow writer. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. He likes to wander around and attract metal things with his head, which is a magnet. (laughs) Urban explorers often die when Magnet Head attracts things they're wearing and rips their bodies apart by doing so. Mm -hmm. This is creepy, scary, weird horror story about how I a middle-aged school teacher from Iowa, encountered Magnet Head in an abandoned tractor manufacturing facility. That's oddly specific, Mm -hmm. but okay. Warning, my story is full of blood, danger, running, and monsters. End of original paragraph. Now the AI takes over. monster trucks. It's also full of monster trucks. Yes, monster tractors. Would you watch a monster tractor run over fields of corn? (laughs) It's going to jump this tomato plant. (laughs) What? Yeah, well, shit, we should have gotten an AI to generate a monster truck story that goes wrong. In the early 2000s, my wife and I lived outside Des Moines, Iowa, where she worked as a nurse at Mercy Hospital. We had two little boys who were both under three years old. How does... Oh, God, leave her alone. And we were living paycheck to paycheck. Our house needed fixing up, but it was too expensive to do that because we could barely make ends meet. See, this already understands what it's like living in Iowa. (laughs) One day, our neighbor gave us a flyer advertising a place called The Warehouse. The advertisement said something like, Warehouse is open every Saturday from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. I like how you were going to do, like, a super offensive Iowan accent, and then you chickened out. You were like, Warehouse! Warehouse! It's It's open open. every Saturday from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. Because after that, we're plum tuckered out. (laughs) It showed pictures of the warehouse and what kinds of things you can find inside. If there was a warehouse, I would want to know what you can find inside of it and pictures of it. (laughs) How to burn it down. Okay, Brandon. Okay, arsonist. (laughs) The main picture featured a large truck on the ground next to the building. The caption read, You never know what you'll find. So we went to check out this mysterious place. It's not mysterious, it's a warehouse full of products. If, if serendipitously, the, the magnet head ends up just being a monster truck somehow, I will die. Uh-oh. 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 Dead pal's gonna die, because that's guaranteed to happen. Okay. 
I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I don't lie. Mm-hmm. Abraham Lincoln is like, I cannot lie. Yep, we that's what Abraham really... Lincoln said. <laughs> Four score and seven years ago, I cannot lie. I can't die, pal. We it. weren't, man. We're really on a head trauma via firearm kick, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, head trauma via other means not as interesting. No, no. I mean, like monster truck. I, then I'm open to it. You know, I'm open to monster trucks. That's that's really what monster trucks are are missing is you know machine guns mounted on them. Definitely. <laughs> that's. That's something out of Idiocracy is just machine guns mounted on there, and they just, like, shoot people in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got some blood on me. Wait, it's mine. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't really interested in any of the items for sale or anything else. Double, ple- please write, like, a surreal monster truck story so I can read it. I don't I don't have the energy. We wanted to go back and look around. My my wife mm-hmm. and I walked into the building and immediately noticed all sorts of different junk and trash strewn everywhere. We were broke there were broken tools and appliances and old mattresses and furniture stacked against the walls. Once again, novel AI likes describing areas and a bunch of stuff in it. Like the books all up in the other place in the other story. It's really good at like setting the scene. And again, you haven't messed with all the knobs because of your aversion to knobs. Yeah. Uh, Might just, as well face it. You have an aversion to knobs. <laughs> <laughs> your rubber glove. <laughs> your fucking tongs. Yeah. Looks like uh, something's wrong. Mm-hmm. Hypochondriac. <laughs> I, I don't know. Your stove is on. <laughs> The air is on. The TV's on. Everything's on. <laughs> you are single-handedly responsible for global warming. Yep, there you go. Uh, everything, hidden treasure. Oh, Even though everything looked so raggedy and useless, I still couldn't help imagining some kind of treasure hidden somewhere among the garbage. This is, it's so good at thinking what a person would think in that situation. Like, yeah, if you're going, yeah. It, yeah, if you're going to a sort of garage sale type thing or a flea market, <laughs> that that is the mindset of just like, yeah. there's a bunch of shit here, but there might be the shit that I want. There might be one single thing that is of value. However, it didn't take long before I realized that most of the stuff was just trash. I mean, there were tons of empty paint cans and bottles of motor oil. Bottle of oil? <laughs> Ma- bottle, bottle, of, bottle, of, bottle of motor petrol. Uh, even, and even a few dead animals lying around. Hmm. The place was really filthy with nothing but junk. Was there a dead rat giving a thumbs up? Huh? Uh, Wait, this is just a storage unit. Wait a minute. <laughs> it... It is, right. My wife and I spent about 15 minutes, walk- that's a long time, walking around looking through the various piles of trash and junk. Then, we saw another side door in the back wall. I've got a side door in my back wall. It led to a room with more stuff. We decided it would be fun to explore that room first. When we opened the door, we found ourselves in a much bigger room than the first one. It seemed like every inch of space was packed with stuff. Most of the stuff was broken, but there were still lots of things that looked pretty valuable. See, now we're getting to the good stuff in the back room. So, yeah, so in the back rooms always has mm-hmm. the good stuff. There's That's why the back room's wiki is full of just excellent stories. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pure gems in there. Oh, there's some gems in there, I'll tell you that. It, it is uh, weird that they went with, like, dead animals in there, because they don't elaborate on that. Yeah. Not, like, taxidermied animals. It's just, there's dead animals in there. There's yeah. just a dead moose. Mm-hmm. This is, it, just, there's just dead birds littering the floor. There was I, also... Hmm? I, I think that this also tells writers, like, hey, is this is this interesting to read? Like, are you having a good time right now, Slime Beast? Yes. I love these fucking things. Novel AI really hits it out of the park. So, so even though the story isn't like necessarily coherent, what what I'm getting from this is we're entertained. You're probably entertained listening to this story. The reason for that is the AI doesn't care about taking risks. It's just going to take risks. Mm-hmm. There were dead animals in. There. Yeah, that's fine. That's it. And, and so instead of writing a very conservative, boring story, just take risks. Who cares? Exactly. And when everybody makes fun of you for the risk you've taken, that's a good thing because. 
for every one person who hated it, there are a lot of unspoken people who, you know, it blew their mind. There was also a small hallway leading away from the big room. When we got down the hall, we discovered another room. <laughs> the door was closed, but I pushed it open anyway. I, I just kind of, I just flung the door open because I'm that kind of guy. <laughs> if I see a closed door, I just fling it open. Inside was a huge stack of plywood boards. There must have been 25 feet of them piled up there. They were all perfectly square, and they were stacked about 10 feet high. A man's voice suddenly sounded behind me, and I jumped in surprise. Oh, hey, he said. What are you guys doing here? Oh, I like this. Maybe they're in a place where they're not supposed to be, and they Ooh. accidentally got into an employee-only area. Maybe. The employee we plywood room. <laughs> the employee <laughs> plywood room. That's plywood's for the enjoyment of employees only. <laughs> what do you do with it? Mostly just run our fingers across it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, we knock on it, you know. And knock on plywood. we That's our saying back here. <laughs> this is Iowa. We can't afford wood. We knock on plywood. <laughs> we <t> <laughs> what the fuck? Everything here is... We, we only got space for corn. We ain't got no trees here. <laughs> Boy, I hope... I think this is going to be a good corn crop this year. Knock on corn. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, my corn tree's starting to fruit over there. <laughs> corn tree. My name's Corn Tree. Welcome to my <laughs> <laughs> Corn Tree. Corn Tree Dandy Warehouse. I don't know. Yeah. We turned around to see a tall, skinny guy standing there. Hi, I'm Corn Tree. He was dressed completely in black, except for his bright yellow, smiley face t-shirt he wore over his black hoodie. By the way, <laughs> I did not say creepypasta at any point in this, and yet here we are. Amazing. It, it is interesting, though, that it's just like, yeah, he had a bright, smiley face t-shirt over his black hoodie. Yeah. Under his black hoodie. It's over his black hoodie, which is like, what the... <laughs> Doesn't make any you sense. Can't, he's, he was wearing a shirt that you couldn't see, but I knew what it was. Mm. His hair was short and spiky and stuck straight up. The only thing visible in his right hand was a knife. Bum, bum, bum. Whoa. I, I guess um, Mr. Corntree here is, is quite an aggressive person. All right. So you remember me telling you when, I, when we were setting this up, I said novel AI really hits it out of the park? Yeah. Okay. I want you to read the next two, two entries here. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, we came to look around, I answered. Why? He smiled, showing off his sharp teeth. Well, that's cool, he said. You can call me... Oh my god. Yes? Hugh, the decimator. <laughs> a hoodied character with a knife, and he's got the one flair, you know, of having a smiley t-shirt. The AI created an OC called Hugh the decimator. <laughs> Oh my god. What the fuck? Hugh Decimator. I did not mention Creepypasta at all. I did mention Trevor Henderson, which maybe it, you know, is in the same circles, like in terms of content. Um, this is incredible. It's nuts yeah. how, how uh, approximate it can get. And, and, and this is unironic. Like this, can, this can be an unironic character. <laughs> well, <laughs> his well, name is you. Hugh. The, Hugh <laughs> Hugh the Decimator right next to Tiki Toby. Yeah, goddamn. Whoa, my wife whispered. That doesn't sound like a very friendly name. Hugh stepped that, closer that, to us. That, Pardon me? That's what an adult says when when their child is getting into creepypasta. Yeah. It's just like, Jeff the Killer, that doesn't sound like a very friendly name. Yeah, there's like a pause. That doesn't sound like a very friendly name. <laughs> Hugh stepped closer to us. Don't worry, he said. I won't kill you. I'm actually here to warn you about the magnet head. It actually brought it back in. Oh my god. I w I'm not going to kill you. Yeah, I'm just going to hurt you. you hurt you real bad. I'm just going to watch the magnet head kill you. At the mention of the word magnet head, I felt a chill run down my spine. I looked at my wife, and we both knew that something bad was going to happen. Hugh continued talking. There's, There's a monster. There's a monster. Yep, yeah. There's a monster looking around these parts, and he likes to suck heads. <laughs> he licks metal and sucks people dry. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. My wife started crying softly and hugged her children close. Hugh smiled again. Okay, oh, my God. The minute there's danger, they're her children. <laughs> <laughs> well... Do we know that he was the sperm donor in this situation? Well, I just... I like the idea of... 
you know, the minute there's like a fight or flight kind of thing where he might have to run from a monster in the building, he was like, she'll, she'll take care of her children, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> that's very funny. But the truth is, I think he's just a monster truck murder cock. Yeah, probably. It's okay, he said. I don't think he'll bother you. I'd watch out if I were you. Then Hugh walked away. Once he was gone, I took my family home. I never went back to that place again. <laughs> and like, Hugh turns around and he's like, but I think he'll leave you alone. It's like, all right, I will take my children home with my <laughs> wife. Come on, honey, put my children in the car. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a sociopath thing to say. <laughs> It was Sunday, December 4th, Jay-Z's birthday, mm-hmm. and also Chelsea's birthday, and also Beyonce's birthday. I Chelsea. don't know why I remembered them in that order. Hmm. My wife and I just started finish, just finished dinner. Just started finishing dinner. God damn it. We just finished my, starting dinner and started finishing dinner. It's the same thing, really. <laughs> uh, with my parents and my younger brother at a restaurant in Des Moines. After all, we all stopped by a friend's house to play games and enjoy drinks. I, I will say this drinks, so again. about uh, Hugh the Decimator. He is one of the creepypasta OCs of all time. Oh, yeah. And he, sh- he knows when to leave, too. He shows up, takes the stage, and he bows away- bows gracefully. And, you know, then he's like, um, and then he walked away. That's it. <laughs> he just shows up, much of him. knife in hand, mm-hmm. just to warn people. <laughs> about Magnetet. <laughs> I just want James the the warner. It's just like I gotta warn you. This knife, I'm going to stab you. <laughs> they call stabs them. <laughs> they call me James the Warner. Oh, I think I went to high school with you. What's your name again? James Warner. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> So you just took your killer name and it's just your real name <laughs> and you put the in there. It's just like, yeah, it was a prophecy. Yeah. A warning, one might even say. Yes, exactly. As usual, the adults did shots of tequila <laughs> while my brother and I drank soda. My parents left as soon as we arrived, saying that they needed to pick up their youngest son from their girlfriend's house. There is a lot of baby's mama shit happening here. And it's funny because uh, uh, it's funny because it goes from uh, all of that to I left there and never went back. Anyway, I was having lunch with my family or dinner at a restaurant. And it's just like, oh, OK, we're just moving on the, with life. That's the it. way you started talking there where you're just like, oh, uh, uh, it sounds like you took a shot at tequila. I did. I took a shot at tequila tequila. <laughs> Sorry. I've been setting did- I've been setting this up for a long time. I'm in a hotel room right now looking out the window. No. uh <laughs> There was a second person. She was on the second floor. How did she get shot from below? <laughs> what, um, did, did you know Tila Tequila is apparently like an insane person who thinks she's God now? And is, I don't know if she is or was extremely racist. So everybody out there, my joke is really funny because she's a horrible person. <laughs> uh, it's it's great. I love the internet just introduces you to all like a new breed of horrible person you wouldn't have imagined existed. Tila Tequila. I would have thought you would have been the nice person. I don't understand. Uh, as everyone settled into the game table, my wife leaned over to whisper in my ear. Did you hear about that crazy news story? She asked. Yeah, I answered. A monster head sucker thing tried to eat a guy. <laughs> I heard it sucked his brain out, she said. Man, that's so messed up. We laughed together. That was the last time I ever heard my wife laugh. Fuck, dude. After the incident, she's perfectly fine. It's just they suck the part of her brain that laughs out of her brain. <laughs> the brain that laughs. What the fuck? <laughs> I do like how novel AI... I know it's hard for the audience to tell that I'm having a bit of a coughing fit. That was the last time I ever heard from heard my wife laugh. I love the fact that it knows how to drop in those really, really less than subtle like online horror fiction tropes. Like, <laughs> just so you know, she's going to be going away soon. You know? <laughs> If, if this wasn't pulling directly from No Sleep, I wonder how it would be. Because, like... It's not. It, that's the thing. I didn't put No Sleep in it. It's weird. Yeah, true, true, true. Well, you did put, again, things that are in the same circle. Right, so right. I wonder what would happen if it was... Like, could you make AI dumber by, by collectively, as a species, writing worse? 
I don't know. Can people write worse than no sleep? Am I right, audience? Huh? Am I? Don't Th- forget to my... like and subscribe. Question mark. <laughs> that's the thing. Is here's here's some speculative fiction. In the future, we have these AIs writing stories, and we're not writing the stories. We're just saying, hey, write me a story right now, and we're enjoying it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Could you theoretically, as a hacker, inject bad writing into the algorithm and just flood spam bad writing and t- until it starts shitting out worse stories? Probably. I mean, they had to. Th- I think that's one of the reasons. Is it in Furkit that they had that uh, got dumber because they took out a lot of pornography or something like that? I don't yeah, know. Uh, no, it was AI Dungeon. AI oh, Dungeon. AI Dungeon. That's right. Where it was, it, it was getting too smutty, so they like porn. removed a bunch of stuff from it. I don't know, but yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, here's what I want to do, though. I should probably do this on Enforkit. Is just like feed it, like like try and get it to write a Trump speech. <laughs> I'm sure it could. Uh, yeah, because I I think that it, it, that Enforkit would, would actually excel at that better than novel AI. Mm. Novel AI would make him make sense. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of the issue. <laughs> it's like it, it, it would be interesting. Maybe we'll have to do that at some point, or other people can do it and send it to us. That way, we don't have to do any work of having an AI write a story for us. Yeah, we don't have to do anything at all. Is this that uh, is? Is this me or you? I think it's me. Oh, okay. After a couple of hours of board games, the lights suddenly shut off. Ooh. We all stood there and waited for the power to come back on. Then my mom and dad returned from getting cigarettes. I guess they had gotten lost on their way to their son's house. My sister told them that we were staying the night. So my parents and my brother headed back home to get ready. There's a lot of family to keep track of. Everybody's staying here for the night. Everybody go home and get ready and come back to stay for the night. What the fuck? Exactly. My wife and I stayed up late playing games by candlelight. Finally, we decided to turn in for the night. She was already asleep when I crawled into the bed beside her, which made sex weird. Mm -hmm. Since we lived in a tiny apartment, it wasn't getting, it wasn't easy getting comfortable. I don't know why, since it's Iowa, I pictured them in a farmhouse, but yeah. As we were about to pass out from exhaustion, I heard the awful sound. A magnetic Can you imagine a, hmm? a, 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 comp, a, a giant apartment complex in the middle of a cornfield? <laughs> a cornplex? <laughs> a cornplex? Uh, the Belco experiment, too. As we were about to pass out from exhaustion, I heard the awful sound. A magnetic thrum echoed in the distance just outside the bedroom curtains. Within a few seconds, the noise grew louder. It sounded as if something was shaking violently across the floor. I guess things being drawn to the magnet. I was terrified, but I didn't want to wake my wife. I carefully slid out from under the covers and crept toward the window. Outside, in the darkness, I saw a giant figure walking around the corner. It was a tall, humanoid creature with a giant magnet on its head. Its body was covered in black scales, and it carried a rusty spear in one arm. It had a long tail that dragged behind it like a dog. Hmm. You ever give your girl the rusty spear? No, I'm very respectful to the women I date. What are you talking about? (laughs) The The woman respecter. The creature walked past our window, dragging the same terrible metallic sound with it. Uh, I passed so close to the building that I could feel the wind from it passing. I lay awake in the dark for a while. Uh, for a long time, watching the monster as it moved along the alleyway, searching for something. In the morning, I woke up to find that my wife was missing. Bum, bum, bum. Her clothes, underwear, and shoes were all neatly folded on the dresser. Next to them was a note. Dear John, I can't, I'm can't. i sorry, but I can't stay here anymore. I love you, but this place is too dangerous. I can't be safe here when my leg is made of metal. I hope you understand. <laughs> Please keep would've the kid. Would have been nice to mention that sooner, author. But okay. <laughs> yeah, th- that's the thing. Is like it, it sometimes understands like foreshadowing and sometimes doesn't. Mm-hmm. It's well, that is kind of like a no sleep author though, because they they don't they don't understand. <laughs> Check all they don't slide. understand. Yeah. It's um, it, it, this story just like no sleep authors needs another draft to to finish it up. You know. I know you'll do the best you can for them. Take care of them and try to be safe. Your loving wife, Mandy. Well, maybe she lost her leg uh, during a little bit of monster truck murder cuck play. That could be. Monster truck murder cuck. Uh, dismember. 
mint. It doesn't rhyme. Okay. It ha- <laughs> There's nothing you can do that rhymes there. It's hard to say exactly how many years have passed since I saw a magnet head. It feels like forever ago, but then again, it seems like it happened yesterday. <laughs> Well, well, why can't she just take off her metal leg and get a not metal leg? Get a wooden leg, yeah. She'd rather get rid of her husband and children than <laughs> switch to a wooden <laughs> leg. Listen, my husband said it's it's the it's me or the metal leg. Mm-hmm. I said goodbye. Mm-hmm, that's right. I walked away. Tink, tink, <laughs> tink. <laughs> Back when the events in this story took place, I taught eighth grade social studies at a local middle school. My job was to teach kids about history, civics, government, and current events. At least that's what I thought my job was supposed to be. Instead, I found myself spending most of my time grading papers, planning lessons, and helping students who were falling behind. This really understands teachers, especially in Iowa. I rarely got, I rarely got to sit down during the day and actually teach my class. I taught from 8.30... When I did, they would throw corn at me. Exactly. Stop teaching. I want to fall behind in my lessons because I'm an Iowan and Slime Beast doesn't like Iowans. They're just, the kids are sitting there with straws blowing instead of like paper balls. They're blowing bits of corn at them. <laughs> just corn kernels. This is, this is the uh, modern day reboot of um, Children of the Corn. Mm-hmm, that's right. I taught from 8.30 a.m. until 3 p.m. And then I usually stayed late to finish lesson plans or grade homework. I would often end up working until 10 p.m., sometimes later. Boy, that is a long time. That is an insane workload. One day I was teaching a unit on the Cold War when I overheard several girls talking about a movie they had seen. It was called The Thing. The movie is about a group of scientists who are trapped in a cabin in Antarctica with an alien life form that looks like a giant human being but has... Giant green bloodshot bloodshot eyes growing from its chest. Oh, it's bloodshot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, but man, take a load of this. <laughs> I, 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 it's weird that it almost understood the thing, but almost. then it just almost. Yeah. The creature eats its victims' faces. Wait, the, wait, wait, wait. Actually, the creature eats its victims. Bleh, creature eats its victims' faces is kind of like an AI machine way of saying it impersonates them. Yeah, it is. It's it's. Oh my god! It's it's so hard trying to understand what the AI does know and doesn't know. Yeah. C- c- like we have to think about this conceptually. Like it actually doesn't know anything. Yeah. It is just eating information and spewing it back out, but it's doing so in an almost convincing manner mm-hmm. like if you put this in front of me and told me that it was like written by a 15 year old i would be like yeah yeah <laughs> this pretty much th- there's no way that this doesn't pass like the turing test right you know exactly the movie was based on a true story and the scientists became known as <laughs> the alaskan men mm-hmm. yeah the movie yeah, yeah that makes sense the alaskan men and uh, in antarctica yeah exactly <laughs> the movie was pretty scary, but none of the girls seemed too concerned about it. They all talked about how it was awesome. I agree. I wish we could have seen that at the theater, one girl said, fucking Zoomers. They, they just discovered the thing, and they're like, has anyone seen this old movie? <laughs> yeah, another agreed. Those movies are always better in theaters. You know, I started, catching their attention. I once saw Bagdad Head. <laughs> fucking boomer. Fuck you. Okay. Could you imagine him getting pulled into the principal's office like, why are you telling girls about Magnet Head? What is this? Maybe that's where this will end up. Let's find out. He, he's, he's just like, I once saw Magnet Head. And let me tell you, you know, that underwire thing in your bra would yank your titties right off. Yep. Okay. They would just be like. <laughs> 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 Now, it, one of the students said that when you uh, were talking about this, you said that her titties would go bla 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 bla. Uh, no, that's actually bla. <laughs> You're not doing it right. It's it's. He, it, he leans down and like jiggles her boobs when she does it, and then like when he's in the principal's it. office, it, when he's in the principal's office, he does the same thing again. He's just like, no, no, you you misunderstood. And jiggles his tits. God damn it! You know, I started catching their attention. I once saw Magnet Head. The girls rolled their eyes and turned away. What is that? Some new craze? Some new dance craze? One of them asked. 
No, I this replied. Is, this is getting the age thing mixed up. The the adult should be saying, what is this, some new dance craze? Exactly. Why, are the, why are the little girls boomers? <laughs> the little girls are boomers and the teacher is a zoomer. No, I replied. It's a real monster. It's a tall, humanoid creature with a giant magnet on its head. Really? One of the girls exclaimed. Yes, I explained. It's a giant head eater. They stared at me for a moment. Then one of them asked, how do you know about it? I used to live where it lives, I answered, and that's why I moved away. If I go back, I'm afraid I might see it again. I left a bunch of kids there. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, where are his kids? If he had kids, I would want to know where they are how and to what kill they're them. doing. How to kill them. <laughs> what does it look like, they asked. I hesitated. I think it has a giant human. I think it is a giant humanoid creature, but it has huge growing green, green eyes. That grow nope. out of its chest. It's mm. So close. It has huge green glowing eyes that grow out of its chest. Its skin is a shiny black collar and covered in spikes. This is very much so what Trevor Henderson would draw. Mm -hmm. I like and how he I like how he heard about the thing and how it has an eyeball in its chest, and he's like, I think that my creature had a giant growing eye glowing eyeball in its chest. <laughs> like he's copying what they were saying. Yeah, he He's an unwritten. Maybe this story is about an unreliable narrator. Mm -hmm. He's leaving his kids behind. Uh, he he just watched his wife get eaten by Magnet Head and just covered it up because he was too much of a coward to do anything well, about it. He's an unreliable narrator. The thing is, her clothes were still there when she supposedly left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe he got up in the middle of the night and took her, she, it like just sucked her brain out and he took the corpse and just dumped it somewhere. That's right. He dumped it in that warehouse with all the dead He animals. dumped it in the mm, Walmart uh -huh. dumpster. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. It walked on two legs. Just just go to a uh, police station and say that mm, maybe mm -hmm. you should check mm, the mm -hmm. Walmart, Walmart dumpster. dumpster. Mm -hmm. And then just run out of the police station. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it walks on two legs and has sharp claws on its hands and feet. And, uh, that's it. That's all it says. It doesn't mention the tail or the spear. Nope. He forgot about all that. And he just invented that it has a giant eye because he wanted to impress them. Maybe he has a neurological disease that just makes him believe crazy things. I don't Maybe. know. Oh, my head. Oh, my God. <laughs> that sounds totes awesome. Like the scariest thing ever. One girl cried. Yeah, another chimed in. You should really tell Mr. Anderson. Maybe he could have a movie night and show us that movie. It's not a movie, I said. But maybe it would be a good idea for one. Fuck you, no sleep <laughs> author. <laughs> Fuck you. I, I do like that he's irate about it. It's like, it's not a movie. <laughs> it's like the kid, yeah. It actually happened. Mr. Anderson will never let us film that. One girl argued. Maybe if we all pitch in some money, I suggested. Fine, another girl interrupted. Let's do it. And I'm going to let you finish <laughs> off the story. Go ahead. Did, did they just bribe him? They are just like, he'll never let us watch that. It's not appropriate. What if we bribe him <laughs> with money? Yeah, I'm assuming Mr. Anderson is the principal, even though it doesn't say so. <laughs> yeah. The... I can't let you do that, Neo. Uh, the, that summer was the best experience of my life. The, the, the AI really hates Mr. Anderson. Mm -hmm. Yep. The summer was the best experience of my life. The girls and I filmed our little horror movie about Magnet Head, and I wrote in scenes where each of them got to kiss me. <laughs> they got the honor. The AI wrote this. The AI wrote this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. It fucking did, I swear to God. Hugh the Decimator. <laughs> this is... That I is want you... Nuts. Okay. DP. DP, your homework is to figure out how open AI works. Or, I'm sorry, novel AI works. And your homework is to try it. And you will fucking see. This Okay. I love that I was also going with this whole thing about, like, haha, what if he's, you know... A predator or something, and then he's he's grooming all of these girls with his weird horror film <laughs> based on a monster that he may or may not have seen. I, I don't know if you saw this in the Discord, but I tried to use this to write a Wendigo story where the main character was a psychiatrist at an abandoned asylum, and his patient was Mrs. Wendigo, 
and it immediately devolved into just literal porn, like actual, <laughs> like you know, just very graphic fucking. So uh, uh, I think it, I think it wants to steer that way, you know, sometimes. Yeah, probably is because people are feeding it that information, yeah. and I am definitely going to, you know, feed it like Fudinari Cottage oh, Glory God. Hole Fantastic Times. Uh, and see what happens uh, because I think it'd be funny. Mm -hmm. Just because Uh, it'd be funny. I I think that it would be funny. It was so much fun. I got to spend the entire summer making out with hot girls, (laughs) filming, and hanging out with my friends. Incredible. (laughs) He's just having a hot girl summer, and by that he means kissing underage girls. He he literally became a child by the end of the story. (laughs) Hanging and hanging out with my friends. Well, well, that's the thing is like earlier on, I was going to mention this. I'm like, did the narrator shift when there was a page break? Because it was like, yeah, the adults were doing shots of tequila, but my brother and I were drinking yeah. soda. And I just thought that like, oh, he was he was differentiating himself between himself and his brother and other adults. But maybe he was a kid. Maybe he's an, a, a kid with a wife and children. I don't know. I mean, he could he could technically be. What is the age of uh, this is an odd question, but. The age of consent in Iowa, he could have married an older woman with children at like 18 or maybe 17. <laughs> so who knows? But uh, he, like he is you. a teacher, but who knows what the fuck? You're in Iowa, so I, I doubt the bar is very high. The age of consent is based on how many uh, square meters of corn you own. <laughs> fuck. God damn it. Oh, so, yes, yes. You have to understand the uh, extenuating circumstance. He may be a 14 year old. But he does own eight hectares of cornfields. God damn it. Hectares. Son of a bitch. <laughs> not even a, a mega thread of... Nope. Uh, not I, even I, a I, mega thread of <laughs> allegations? No. That's not what it says. I, I, okay, so <laughs> I, I was trying to read and also find the word acres in my head. I wasn't uh-huh. trying to do a bit. I couldn't find the word acres. I see. I couldn't figure out what our dumb measuring system for amount of fields is. Mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry, I'm an American. Mm-hmm. I'm not even not even Magnet Head could ruin my happiness. By the end of summer, I'd fall in love with the girls. The end. Yeah, and that's the point where Slime B says, "The end." <laughs> end of story. We've gone appropriately off the ra- well, inappropriately. We've gone off the rails to an extent that is acceptable for reading on the podcast. <laughs> Goodbye, story. What an incredible story! But maybe we should give one of my stories. Let's let's uh, let's have an opportunity go. to read my AI story that is from Inferkit. <sighs> you don't know. We might enjoy it. Fucking Inferkit. We- Fucking infant kit. It's for Die. babies. You oh. might as well call it infant kit. Okay. Infant shits, even. It's basically yep. a diaper. So, this is called. This story is called Aport Unity. Uh, y- yes, it Op-port is. Aport Unity. Okay. Listen, who cares about proofing? It's it's a baby story, right? Yeah, exactly. So this is uh, the first paragraph that I wrote, and then the rest of it is written by the AI. Mm -hmm. Hey there, we're happy you're here on this little crazy ball of dirt for this little speck of time where a lot of weird and interesting things are happening. Makes you wonder what it all means, right? No. Well, funny thing is, this opportunity in all caps we have for you. To be honest, this is a great opportunity... For you, a humdinger of an opportunity, in fact. But it's only for you, this opportunity, that is. Let me tell you more about this opportunity you don't want to miss out on. All right, so now let's read Inferkit. Never use the word opportunity again, I'm guessing. Uh, <laughs> now that you've tried so sorry. hard to drive that home. Uh, so here, here's my premise. I, I, I want to get my premise out there. I wanted to see what would happen if, like, these stories, we, we've seen them write articles where it's like we tr- we try to like tell it hey here's a slender man thing and it starts just writing an a an op-ed mm-hmm. just like a, a an article for some reason mm-hmm. and it's always very clickbaity like you would like rumor come out does is bruno mars gay kind of right of does writing. is ai make shitty story <laughs> yeah mark. so so i was like okay let me see if i can try and 
make a clickbait kind of like horror story off of telling, hey, we got a great opportunity for you, and just try out this opportunity. Mm-hmm. And uh, what, what does it down do? And- <laughs> we noticed you haven't checked out this opportunity yet. All right. We, we, we've put a lot of coupons for this opportunity in your mailbox and, um, and under also, your door and through your window and, and, uh, strap them to your dog in the backyard and <laughs> he's come back in and we notice you haven't taken the, the opportunity to uh, come on down. We've been stapling coupons to your dog coupon. All right. So let's see where this your goes. Child, hmm? We've been abducting your child and opening up his book bag and putting <laughs> some opportunity tickets in there. God and damn it. All right, so let's see where this goes with this opportunity, and I'm sure it will not completely disregard that. One billion dollars for Egon Voktroy, the big E. <laughs> Would you be... Ki- <laughs> what is up? My name is Egon Voktroy. My friends call me the big E. Why? I don't know. I do not care. Would Egon you be curious to know? Hmm? I like the idea that Egon is just spelled with an I or something. Mm-hmm. Would you be curious to know about... Did I say Igor or Egon? You said Egon. Okay, good. Would you be curious to know about the guy behind Egon Voktroy? The guy who created and patented the Egon Voktroy? See? In fact, this man wasn't given anything in life. Just recently, he was offered $1 million for Egon Voktroy, making him a very wealthy man indeed. However, the true reason behind this offer came as a nasty surprise to Egon. So Egon Voktroy created and patented Egon Voktroy. It's it's unclear whether, like, maybe Egon Voktroy is like a Frankenstein's monster kind of thing. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yes. You see, the idea of this pay for the inventing process didn't sit very well with him. Egon told us this in no uncertain terms, stating, I'm not the kind of guy who pays for anything. If I'm making something, I just want it to be built. Oh, all right. So, okay, Egon. This is not psycho. a very big opportunity. No. Egon Voktroy of Big Brother Incorporated... <laughs> Owner of Egon Voktroy, the big E. Maybe there's a difference. Maybe there's Egon Voktroy and then Egon Voktroy, the big E. And yes. the big E is the creator. This is fucking psychotic, but yes. <laughs> well, to tell the truth, Egon is very is a very misunderstood man. He is no different than you and me. In fact, he's a far nicer guy than you and me. In fact, Egon is very funny. Well, the kind of guy that Egon is. It's almost e- like it is combining Elon Musk, Vladimir Putin, and Don- Donald Trump <laughs> into one character. It will, Well, I was kind of thinking it is the Frankenstein and Egon, the, uh, Igor, fucking Frankenstein and Elon Musk is, is what I'm getting out of Frank and Musk. Frank and Musk. Musk and Satine. <laughs> <laughs> Musk and Stein. He doesn't just talk funny. He acts funny, too. Egon is the kind of guy who will really laugh at you for being funny in your own funny way. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he la- the he kind- wantonly laughs at you and mocks you. What a nice guy. He's also the kind of guy who will make you wish you weren't so funny. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> He's just bullying you for, for trying to be funny. He's like, stop being funny, you fucking bitch. I am Egon Volktroy, inventor of the Egon Volktroy, a.k.a. the Big E. So, little man, why don't you do a dance for me? <laughs> Funny little fuck. <laughs> he's, he's also a Russian monster for some reason? Probably. Funny movie producers. Ron Arad and Ephraim, Ephraim, Ephraim I'll just say, Ken, Keyshawn. Ron Zach Arad. Efron. What? Zach Efron. Yes. What the fuck is yes. this? Ron Arad, Ron Arad is one of the funniest guys we've ever met. When I say funny, I mean funny in a funny kind of way. Really funny. And Ephraim Kishan, the head of this funny movie makers, is one of the funniest guys we've ever met. When we told Ephraim that Egon was coming to be on our show, he was genuinely surprised. 
I love that <laughs> w- w- we read all of these novel AI stories and it's just laden with like a bunch of threads, story threads, mm-hmm. and all of them are just are like showing you something. It's just like, hey, this, you know, this monster is walking by and it's ominous and it's looking for something and blah, blah, blah. And this one is just telling you over and over. Yeah. Again. It's just like these people are a- funny. <laughs> These people are funny, okay? Listen, you gotta laugh at this shit. Ephraim also stated that he was excited about this project. He really did look enthusiastic. I didn't really think the producers would actually enjoy the company of such a funny guy so much. What the fuck? I know producers of funny movies absolutely hate it when, you know, in general. That's the picture I get in my head, when people are funny. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that would make sense if you've seen... (laughs) <laughs> if you've seen any uh, modern comedies. That's, you're not wrong. Yeah. The Big E Project. All right, let's find out what this is. Bring it home, story. Uh. During Egon's initial presentation at this opportunity, hey. see all one. It said the one. thing. He mentioned this project. It's called the Big E Project. Here's how it's all supposed to work. It's supposed to be one of the biggest and most funny productions <laughs> of all of our lives. <laughs> so stupid. So okay, so it's using the word funny in mm-hmm. the way that I wanted it to use the word opportunity. Right. Like I, I wanted it to use the word opportunity over and over again without ever explaining what the opportunity is. I wanted that to be the gag. Right. Well it, it saw a funnier opportunity. <laughs> 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 it's true. Oh, uh, you see, Biggie will go on to the world of entertainment all the way in Hollywood, New York, Florida, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and even Miami. Even Miami? Even Miami. It's all supposed to be one huge comedy. However, it isn't. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? That one ended up not being as as bad near the end. Maybe if we gave it more time, it would start fleshing it out and start making sense. Maybe it wouldn't. <laughs> you know what we should do? We should have InferKit write something like that, and then we should plug it into n- Novel AI and let it clean it up. <laughs> oh my god. There, there are endless possibilities on what we can do. Uh, do you want to... Do you want to read anything else, or do you want to... Uh, let's save this one for another uh, episode, because I think that that'll be fine. Oh, my I, God. When I edit that and we put sketches on it, it'll be an hour. All right, so let's resume discussion of the stories we just read in three, two... Man, those were good stories. Let's end the episode. Well, I think one of them was good. The other one was uh, funny. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, this, you know, if you want to write your own novel AI story, or Infrakid story for that matter, okay, listen, Mm. uh, you have every opportunity to do just that. Yes, that is true. If you want to do it, you can. Play the jingle. This has been the Fear Fiction Podcast. Your hosts were DP and Slime Beast. Music by Abysme. Art by C.F. Comer. Edited by Elias the Intern. Stay up to date with new episodes by subscribing to the Fear Fiction Podcast on YouTube before the microplastics cause us to turn into mindless, gold-craving, mindless beasts that have no minds. Also, youtube.com backslash creepypasta. Please give those narrations a listen, friends. Until next week, citizens of Monster Coop land. Are you tired of humanity? Because I sure as fuck am. I'm leaving. I'm going to the Corvid Corner. (laughs) Alright, let's see here. Oh, this one's gonna be fun. Corvids, particularly studies on blue jays, show they have episodic memory, which was thought to be unique to humans. And I don't know if I said that right. So they have episodic memory, which means they th- they remember things in sequential order like humans, and we previously thought only humans did that. You know, there are a lot of things that we think are special to humans, and then we, we, we find out, no, actually that's not true. Homie, there's got, like, gorillas have to have, like, sequential memory, right? Yeah, they got to, right? They have to. I mean, they're, well, at least chimpanzees pansies because they're like our closest relative here's here's another thing that we want to think is like yeah chimpanzees here's another like i would assume orcas too since they they can teach each other 
things that they learn, like how to well, that surgically does... remove a, a liver from a shark, which well, is a thing they do. Man, we're getting a lot of, like, sea facts about <laughs> sea animals. No. I mean, just if you want to... Well, that doesn't necessarily mean they have episodic memory. Right. Uh, and, like, it, it does, like, depend on how they define episodic memory. But, That's like, true. what you would think of is just, like, I remember that this thing happened before this thing. Right. And, like, mean, every, every, like, there's everything teaches ravens, everything other things. Ravens and crows have been shown to be able to learn certain steps in order to do things and then modify those steps to be more efficient. Like, when um, scientists tried to put litter, like, machines, like, they would try to train raven. Um, crows don't have litters, Chelsea. <laughs> I'm confusing my animals. <laughs> <laughs> no, like they were trying to train wild crows and ravens to Raven, Raven just being like, Yeah, I gave birth. It was murder. <laughs> it was murder. <laughs> uh, but like um they were trying to train them to pick up litter and in exchange for like little food and treats. So the ravens and crows figured out how little bit of litter would set off the machine in order. Oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And then like I think one of them figured out how to put a string on like just fucking bullshit. They're they're fantastic at figuring out bullshit. Like <laughs> I do love that <laughs> you just have like Pavlov training dogs and he's like Haha, <laughs> I found all the ways that dogs are fucking stupid. And then you just do the same exact exper experiment with Corvids, and they're just like. Haha, <laughs> caca! I found <laughs> all the ways humans are stupid! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's like that meme of just like you live in a cage, like a human saying you live in a cage, and then the ape just being like you pay taxes. Yeah, and it's just like that's that's so much more applicable to Corvettes. It really is. Just like fuck it, I'm out here. I'm flying. I'm happy. I am like finding. I, I get to adopt my own pets. I don't oh even have God. to pay anyone. <laughs> Oh, my lord. Jackdaws have been observed getting kicked out of Olive Garden. <laughs> Did they make a scene? <laughs> you know, one one jackdaw insulted another jackdaw's wife, and that jackdaw <laughs> said, I didn't serve two wars in Iraq, so you could insult my wife at Olive Garden. <laughs> So then they just went and ate from the dumpster. Jackdaws, everybody. No jackdaw fans in the crowd. <laughs> I performed at, at, at the Apollo, and they really did not... All of my Corvid jokes didn't go over well. They didn't land. Just panned out to the crowd, and it's a bunch of black ravens. Oh, no. I guess I don't know. No, I'm not a fan of this. Should have read the room. Should have read the room. The Corvid Corner. <laughs> Dead Palette here from the Fear Fiction Podcast, and we're going to talk about dyslexia. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Roughly 54 million Americans have dyslexia. That's 51% of the population. For strategies on dealing with dyslexia that have changed my life, I want you to go to dyslexia.com. That's D I S L E C E. U H H I J K L M F E E T P I C D M I E A T C H I P F R I S K Y D I N G O R I C K R O L L N O D A D N O F R E E H K C U M G T A R P L A S H F I E L D R E T U R N S N T R P A P B E A T S A B B 
Y E L L A I S C A T B O I G A W R S B W C N O N E L E F T B E E F N E R F B A S T I O N dot com. That's dyslexia dot com. You're not alone, and we will no longer be bullied.